Hi, this is Jeremy Brighton for Core S Squared Software Solutions. Today we'll be talking about a two-dimensional game that I've been working on for the last few days, uh, just as kind of like a small personal project to teach me more about physics engines as well as uh, some optimizations that I could do within uh, OpenGL. So let me launch the application. Uh, the only background that you need is that this game is just uh, designed to be a 2D platformer game. So the world is represented as a, a scene of polygons and uh, your character is supposed to walk around, explore, whatever you want to do. Um, but what's interesting about the game is, is that there's a lot of tools, third-party tools that I've imported myself uh, into the client. Meaning, uh, if you want to, you could fully extend the game, you could customize certain parts of the game, and this is where the cool part is, you could use professional off-the-shelf tools such as Blender uh, to create everything. I didn't write my own little uh, game editor like I have in the past. Uh, my goal was to see if I could import uh, existing tools and use existing tools. Um, so you'll see in the scene right now there are certain polygons that are uh, highlighted in green, and these are collision polygons. If I were to take this off, the general scene looks like this. So you kind of have a base in the top left of the world, some little lookouts, trees, scenery. And if we zoom in, they're not particularly um, of high resolution. The whole point of this is just a, a really quick uh, experiment to see if I could render these things very quickly. Um, you'll also see these white lines, which represent lights. Uh, I have yet to implement that as well as certain polygons that are uh, drawn in a special color, such as red. And those are actually entity polygons. So in memory, they're flagged as uh, special polygons. If they collide with something, if a user gets too close, uh, they execute um, a Python code that's supposed to be connected with a client. Just to clarify, the client's actually written in pure C, C++. Uh, but Python is used as kind of like a scripting engine for the game. Now, what I'm about to show you, though, is the really cool part that I just accomplished a few minutes ago. If the user goes ahead and clicks on the left mouse button, they'll create a, uh, a new player. And essentially, these players are just little robot, bipedal, human-like guys. Uh, I haven't textured them very well just because I'm not an artist. But the really cool thing is, is that these bipeds are fully animated through the physics engine. You saw that I created this biped, and he fell uh, by himself. You can see that there's two legs. Right now it looks as though there's only one because we're looking at them from the side. But they do have two legs, two arms. Uh, I think in total there's 13, yeah, there's 13 uh, body parts that we define. Uh, right now the simulation is going very slow because I wanted to show the very fluid animation. Uh, you'll see that the character is hitting the collision models but they're ignoring the scene models. If I create a few more of these guys, you can see the same behavior happening uh, all over the map. And what's also really nice is the performance is actually really, really fast. Um, I'm going to go ahead and quit out of this application, turn on full simulation, and you'll see what I mean by performance. Um, but just look at the fluidity of some of these models. Uh, I'll take off the collision there. You'll also see that the leg joints and the arm joints and the back joints aren't fully flexible. Just like animals and just like humans, uh, certain joints have angle limitations. You can see here the character has his right leg fully extended out forward, and it doesn't go all the way to his face because there's a 90 degree angle limit. So let me go ahead and change the uh, speed <clears throat> at which I'm doing the simulation. So this is now at full speed. I'll go ahead and full screen the application as soon as it launches. I'm going to take off the collision models, and here I'm going to create a bunch of characters. I'm creating roughly 30 characters, and if you zoom out, you'll see them just falling down. Uh, the performance is still 60 frames out of 60. Uh, right now it's a little bit slower because I'm doing screen capturing. Uh, and you actually can see the complexity of the scene if I turn off uh, flat shaded rendering and I turn on wireframe. And we could zoom in here and see that it's actually uh, quite complex. The scene is much, much more complex than... Uh, the level by itself. And that's really where the beauty of my code steps in, is the optimization. So not only do things look fluid and clean, but they actually run very optimally. So as I mentioned before, uh, this project was designed to teach me uh, how to use third-party tools. And what I mean by that is, in a professional environment, uh, you don't necessarily write everything from scratch. So I should be accustomed to using off-the-shelf tools. What you see in front of you is the source of the game level. 
Uh, everything was drawn in uh, Blender 3D, which is a open source, very famous 3D modeling tool. Uh, everything I did myself, except for the textures. Uh, if the artist wants to, they could go ahead and modify the game level at any point, export it using the code that I wrote, and then re-import it into the game. So let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a second tower, and I'm going to put it... Uh, let's put it here on this little floating island, uh, just for the sake of it. We'll scale it down a little bit, so that way uh, it looks a little bit more consistent. We'll go ahead and grab the world uh, boundaries and maybe change the height a little bit. So let's scale this down a little bit. Let's move it up. Let's move this point over so it doesn't look too, too bad. And there, the world scene is now different. What we've done is modified this area so that it's a little bit bigger, and we've also added a second tower. To export, all you have to do is just load up the Python script I wrote, go ahead and execute it. If there were any errors, it would report it. Everything here was silent. Uh, just an interesting note, if you want to retexture, you can, uh, my system will go ahead and handle, uh, excuse me, my exporter system takes UV coordinates from the polygon faces and then uh, scales it down and then also copies the image resources into the game's executable directory, uh, so that way the artist doesn't even have to do resource management. But anyways, if we go back to the source code and we execute the project using the new map that we generated, we could see that actually the new map is already in front of us. I'll full screen this. So you could see the new tower in the top right, uh, fully copied. Uh, let me take off the collision model so you could see a little bit more clearly. And you could also see the right part of the scenery has grown. And we still have the same physics engine running in the background. I could just keep clicking all day if I want to. Uh, one big issue that has yet to be implemented is if we zoom in on these models, uh, the collision boxes are actually a little bit bigger than I want them to be, and the reason why is for optimization's sake. Uh, I kind of round a lot of numbers to make sure that things go as fast as possible. Uh, to make it look visually more appealing, I'll eventually have to take down uh, those numbers so that, for example, you don't have these wide open spaces underneath the uh, bipedal models. Um, other things that we're going to have to work on in the future is definitely lighting, so we currently include that data, we just simply don't render the lighting features. Uh, and then also I'd like to start making uh, the scene more interactive. So again, we're in the same situation where we have polygons that are linked to functions that should be called if there were interaction enabled. Um, they're just simply not calling them yet. So, uh, so that's that. If you have any questions or comments, please contact me at jbryden at coreS2.com. Uh, so that's that.